Yeah, this thing is uh, super cool. You've got your handy dandy Rolls Royce umbrella. It needs work, it needs lots of work. Hey, what's going on? Not too bad. And I gotta show you something. This is a reality behind the scenes. What in the world painted this? We definitely wanna do some Tom hunting yeah. up in this area. Not only, oh. it's the worst film pattern ever. Hi puppies. Hi. <laughs> you ask for a day in the life at Esoteric. Holy crap. My parking spot's taken up by a couple of Teslas. <laughs> this is the kind of things that we run into on a daily basis. Hey, good morning, Todd Cooperwriter here from Esoteric. Um, a lot of you had asked in one of our recent videos for a behind the scenes video, what goes on the day in the life here at Esoteric. So Wes and I decided uh, to put one together. Here it is first thing in the morning, um, and I'm usually one of the first ones here. It's kind of nice. Everybody walks uh, through the door over here, get to greet everybody when they come in. But welcome to my office. Nothing too spectacular in here. We don't have a big Taj Mahal of a space. You know, we do have stuff here. We're looking at the possibility of building a new building because we can't find anything. And, uh, you know, maybe then I'll have the, the office that, uh, that I'm looking for. But most importantly in here, I have my Kef LS50 wireless speakers. Any of you that, that follow me on social media, you know that I'm a, a big music nut and stereo nut. A little Pink Floyd music playing first thing uh, in the morning to, to get me going. So what we're going to do, we're going to have Wes kind of follow us around throughout the day. Um, all the crazy stuff that, that uh, happens here, the busyness, seeing cars coming and going, so you get a better idea of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, hopefully you enjoy what's to come the rest of the day. Can't have a tour in the office here without looking at the Wall of Fame uh, pictures. My Z06, that was my first sports car, it made a, a big difference uh, in the company. Love that car. This, you guys have seen this collection over the years with all the Ferraris. This was our first trip uh, out of about 12. Uh, this one is a picture of the very first class back in, I think, April of 2012. I was sick as a dog here, but we made the class happen anyhow. Over here, another class, what makes this one special is because you see this uh, guy right here, it looks like he's about 12 years old. That's one of my business partners, Dan. Uh, that's how we met as he attended the class. He was living out on the West Coast, so I thought it was cool to put that up. The uh, 911 Turbo S 991.2, and then uh, my current car, the uh, GTC AMG. This was before we got the A3 wheels on it. All right, so let's uh, take a walk out into the shop, see what's going on first thing in the morning here. So first thing in the morning, we're in here trying to figure out, you know, what the workflow is going to be for the day. You know, what the hit list is. Well, you'd think that we'd uh, have something uh, um, really uh, technical or whatever. Yeah, it's called a whiteboard. Chuck and AJ has gone through, kind of uh, prioritized things, uh, listed it out. Hi, this is Chuck. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, looking around here at the shop, you can tell that, that we're plenty packed in. We've got a lot of stuff sitting outside. You'll, you'll see the cars throughout the day. They're, they're moving a lot. Over here, we've got all the, all the detail uh, guys working on things. On this side, we've got you know, paint protection film. This uh, Bronco, we've done the wrap and everything on it. And then now we've got some, some finishing processes uh, to do. Say good morning, everybody, to the camera. Good morning, everybody. You know, love it or hate it, you've got uh, the new BMW front end here. Actually, on some of the colors, I've thought they've looked pretty, uh, pretty cool. We've been seeing quite a lot of them. Can I go up front? See what's going on uh, up here. Um, you know, today is uh, Tuesday. Last time I checked, and usually on Mondays we have uh, most of our cars coming in for the week. Say good morning, Ryan. Good morning. How's things look? We have anything else uh, scheduled to come in today, or everybody drop off yesterday? Uh, Mister will drop off on um, Mondays. However, I try to <laughs> space it out so not everyone comes in on Mondays. So yeah. The ones that drop off is nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, geez, it gets crazy sometimes. Monday mornings, you got eight people uh, waiting here to drop off uh, all at once. So Ryan is is here. He's taking care of uh, everybody that's coming in. He's updating everybody 
throughout the day, what's going on with their cars. And for those of you that have been watching quite a while, Ryan's been associated with a company one way or another for the last 10 years, doing a lot of design work and, and other things. Uh, started doing some stuff part-time for me. And then finally, Ryan said at one point, you just need to hire me full-time. And what are we, three, three years, four years, four years in now on a full-time basis where Ryan's been doing a, a little bit of, uh, of everything for the company. All right, on to the next thing. Well, you can definitely hear the uh, traffic uh, out here where we're uh, washing. I mean, you see we got a wide variety of uh, stuff going on. New NSX, I think that one's already been polished, uh, waiting for film. We have got some, uh, I think, vinyl work to do on the Lambo. The uh, Rolls Royce, I went and picked this up a couple days ago. That needs a lot of paint correction. Uh, inside's beautiful, man. It's red and black, it's esoteric colors. I love it. I don't even know if it, it's probably locked. Yep, it's locked. Now through the magic of editing, I've got the key to the Rolls Royce here. Yeah, this thing is uh, super cool. If I were to spec this out, this would be the interior that I would get. You got the starry night roof going on here. Yeah, if it rains, you've got your handy dandy Rolls Royce umbrella. Unfortunately, my Mercedes doesn't come with one of those. Shame. Anyway, this, is, this thing's gonna be cool. It needs work, it needs lots of work. A little bit cloudy, so it's hard to really get a good idea of uh, the condition of it, but it's got holograms in it, and it's got a lot of swirls, heavily contaminated. Uh, this thing, we just did uh, PPF and stuff on it. it, needs to go in for final detailing. And then we've got the fine new esoteric van here. So what's up with our esoteric van? Is it locked? Good, means everybody's doing their job. They're locked up. This thing has been great going to shows, dropping off cars. People love it. Oh, we got a R8 pulling up. Hey, what's going on? Not too bad. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's not uh, enough that we're hurting for parking spaces right now, hence the R8 sitting in the middle. But we have got a pine tree up here that is dripping sap like I've never even seen before. I mean, there was a great big drips hanging from it the other day. It looked like a, some kind of horror movie. So needless to say, we're checking to see if we can get this uh, tree transplanted because just can't have it around here. Because you know, parking is at a, uh, at a premium, the amount of employees that we have uh 30 or so we're borrowing the a lot next door for employees cars we've got employees cars uh through here and i got to show you something a little behind the scenes behind the scenes stuff the guys give me a hard time all the time about the current condition or state of cleanliness or lack thereof of uh, of my car this is a reality behind the scenes i contact our distributor of brakes see about getting some lower dust brakes they turned out to be higher dust brakes so they get looking like this after a couple of days you get people like oh how could you stand driving your car so dirty and stuff i'm busy uh which cash paying customer am i going to kick out to get my own car in there to get cleaned up. But I know underneath all the dirt, it's in great condition. It's protected so I can drive it and not have to worry about it. But absolutely love this car. A little bit different since back in the day when Dan and I were only two workers here. We didn't have any problem with the parking back then. So we have Catherine here. Catherine handles all of our design related stuff. You make things pretty, design up all kinds of cool stuff, graphics, whatever else. Um, because we have such little space here, Catherine is right next to our lunch table. And then she also has to put up with Chuck over here. Anyhow, welcome Catherine to the club here at Esoteric. Ooh. It's like the light. And then there's some yep. Over there. Well, it's been repainted for, uh, for yeah. one, because I can see uh, the texture difference in it. Who in the world painted this? Um, so we just want to do a uh, test section on this and get with the customer, yeah. tell them what we found. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and do one here, see what it does. Well, what we've got with uh, this, this whole trunk has been repainted and there's heavy sanding marks, all kinds of areas. Got a weird halo going on, crazy sanding here on the edge. Hopefully there's some clear coat left to it. So we need to go in and kind of diagnose the real deal with this thing and then get with the customer to find out what it's going to uh, take. You're gonna run into these oddball deals all the time where you have to play a little bit of CSI investigation to try to figure it out because a lot of times the customers or owners of these cars, they really don't know the history. You know, somebody before them did it. So we'll take a look, see if it's salvageable. If it is, great. If not, 
Then uh, we worked with a customer to see if we can oversee a proper repainting of it. It didn't add a whole lot in terms of clarity just because of the, the, the poor repaint job on it, but you know, defects and stuff, it definitely yep. looked a bit better. Why don't we do a multi-step on this trunk? Okay. You know, if we want to take a picture before and after and then maybe take a picture before and after on a one step on the rest of it okay. to see how it does. But you know, to get rid of some of these heavy sanding marks yeah. uh, up in here, we're definitely going to need uh, a multi on it. And we go from there. Cool. Let me know how it goes. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. I would say we definitely want to do some uh, compounding yeah. up in this area. People are shutting the door from uh, here as opposed to the door handle and it gets beat up. Don't close your door with your hand on the paint grab a hold of the door handle to close the door. Otherwise, I mean, that's how that gets so beat up. There's dirt on it, people are grabbing it, they're swiping across over and over and over, and it just gets to looking really, really bad. This is pretty typical for stuff that, that we get in. You know, we find some crazy stuff with it, we find some history, um, you know, some repaint issues, some challenges. And even if this were just a one-step kind of deal, we need to make some decisions on, on what to do. In this case, if, if this were just a one-step, we're still trying to determine that. I would still compound right here. I would still compound on the other side. And I'd probably do a compound up here just because um, it looks so bad. We don't want to have some areas of the car still looking really bad and the other one's looking uh, a lot better. Oh, wow. It's a partial bumper. Partial bumper. Okay. Can I speak frankly on this one? Okay, this is a first that I've ever seen. You know, you, you hear about partial front ends, which is the front bumper, part of the hood, sometimes part of the fender. Well, this is actually a partial bumper. The film only goes straight across here. Got some wax buildup in it. Oh, and they even have it seamed. If you have that protected, but you start taking hits up here, the whole bumper is gonna need to get repainted. We'll recommend that that gets pulled off. That's no bueno. And just to think, somebody did that and went, That's it. looks That's good. It. It's a winner, ship it. <laughs> it just keeps getting better and better. This has a partial bumper, but here's the thing. Typically speaking, you put film on behind the rear wheels. The film starts right here. Here's where it gets even better. Up on the top of the bumper, entering the trunk, this is typically the area that gets beat up and it is quite beat up, but there's no film there. The film starts right here and goes down. I, I don't understand that film in the, the, the least bit. There's nothing there. That's the worst film pattern ever. It's like opposite. Are, are, you, at a, are you at a point where you can take a, a break for 30 seconds? This is jo Jordan, he, uh, he does PPF. Okay, so you've done enough back bumpers, you've done enough high impact I areas, I right? I see it already. The film starts right here, and there's nothing up here. It comes back around, it gets better. There's no film here, it stops here and it goes down. So what this looks like, this looks like some, some weird partial rear bumper. The front bumper is just as bad. It's a partial front bumper. Oh, I don't even want to see it. Not only, oh. not only is it a partial going this way, it's seamed. You ask for a day in the life at Esoteric and these are the kind of things that we run into on a daily basis. See if this makes you nervous. All right, just a little bit ago, we were looking at that other car that had a questionable kind of PPF on it. These guys are getting ready to do the front bumper on this uh, Jag here that's owned by a uh, local celebrity who just happens to be named Paul. He runs Cars and Coffee here. We've been working with Paul for a long time. But we did polishing on the car, paint protection film there. He did the hard part, which is the big uh, uh, hood on this. Just wanted to observe so you guys get an idea of what goes into it. You know, there's been a lot of prepping, a lot of cleaning on uh, the front bumper area before it goes on. Um, that's why we have our peel boards right here. It makes it simple to have everything on uh, uh, the wall ready to go. So that way you're not walking around having dirt flying up. Walk it right over to it. You can see what they've got there is a, uh, a pattern. And typically what we're gonna be using are modified patterns. Try to keep that as clean as we possibly can. A lot of cars, there's just no patterns, like on the Cyan we're doing over there, there's no patterns. So a lot of the stuff that we just did on a Black Series Mercedes, 
There's no patterns on it, but we've got uh, a few guys here that really specialize in, in that kind of stuff because you're going to get brand new cars that come out that just aren't patterns available yet. You got to figure it out. Now the guys have a, a bit of work now to get everything uh, adhered to it. If you've never seen the process of paint protection film, it is incredibly involved. Brandon, would it take you about uh, a year to get proficient? Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, and that's with constant uh, oversight on it. I mean, these guys are artisans at, uh, at what they do. The goal here is to make the install as clean looking as it can possibly be, consistency with gaps, folding things in or tucking things in wherever we possibly can. A clean install uh, makes all the difference in the world. It's nice when we have a car like this that are getting multiple services. We get it in here, we do all the polishing, clean it up, bring it in for PPF, and then we pull the wheels, since it's gonna be up on a lift for a while, we pull the wheels so we can do all our wheel and caliper coating. Uh, and then by the time these guys are done with film, slap the wheels back on, drop down, and then it goes back over to the detail side where we can do all our uh, finishing touches, depending on how much is uh, uh, done. Um, you know, it could be another two, three, four days before uh, the vehicle is completely ready to go. Well, I gotta check out, go home, lunch, let out the dogs. We'll be back with you guys here shortly. Otherwise, I would have seen if I could uh, use that short shoot up there. I can get about 55 you know, when I really hammer it. Oh, I shouldn't be saying that, so I want the neighbors to know. All right, it is in a complete day without doing some kind of meeting. It's not the fun part of business. I got out of the corporate world, so I wouldn't have to do so many meetings. Usually, higher level stuff that we're sitting down and going over. Wait, what are you doing? You can't be in here. No. Oh man. Okay, well, uh, we're uh, about 2.30 in the afternoon. You know, things in the afternoons get really busy here. We've had a lot of cars move around. Uh, as you can see, BMW has come in, uh, getting ready to do uh, polishing on it. I'm sure it's getting uh, coating as well. Zach and Nate over here working on uh, some photography for uh, lifestyle type stuff. The, the S63, the guys we were showing you earlier this morning, they got it finished, polished. Alex, how'd you say that come out? So you guys just did uh, compounding on that and the spot compounding around the yeah. door handles and one Some step. Other, there's a couple other deeper scratches. And then you guys just got finished coating on yep. it? Just Miyabi. All right. The Audi that they were working on earlier this morning, uh, got it up on, this is kind of like the bonus lift. It's, it's both for PPF and mechanical type stuff. I think we've got three cars over on this side uh, today. We're working on um, window tint a few others outside that are that are getting uh, ready to be prepped for it. Here in a little bit, uh, Wes and I have to go uh, pick up a customer's car. Where will you pick it up? Uh, can't tell you just yet. Something cool. But it, it's something we've had some HRE wheels on order for about eight months. So I'm telling you, you should stick around if you want to, uh, if you want to see what that car is. So don't click the video off just yet. Well, we talked about the Bronco earlier this morning. It was sitting over there. It's been moved over. We're in the process of, of putting it back together. Really cool, this is the first or second Bronco that we've, uh, we've had in. Um, really neat color. Zach's over here working on QC with uh, all the film right now. And then once he's done with that, we'll finish up with reassembly uh, on it all. And then it'll go into detailing and have them finish things up. So if you haven't seen inside of one of these Broncos yet, that's what it looks like. Pretty straightforward, what you'd expect out of a, a vehicle like this, uh, off-road vehicle. A little bit different than your sports cars and stuff, luxury cars that we normally see. I don't really know exactly what this, this feature is here. I haven't read up on it. To me, it looks like a place to have your picnic lunch. I guess it's a workbench or whatever, I don't know, but it's uh, pretty cool, I dig it. You got a huge gun safe, whatever, I don't even know what the, the heck that is. I haven't had a whole lot of time to really get into this one and look at 
all of the ins and outs on it, but what I can see, it's pretty cool. And that guy was in a hurry. And his uh, Jetta going like 90 miles an hour. Anyhow, on the road, just left the shops about 3.15. Got to head up to the other side of town, pick up a classic Ford GT. Uh, this one's really cool. They did some mods, everything to it. Uh, we did a, a full satin wrap. It had white stripes on it. We replaced it with black stripes. Uh, really cool. It's been lowered and all. We've literally had these HRE wheels on order since I think late January. And here it is, uh, August 10th. My uh, anniversary is tomorrow. Don't let me forget about that. And I've known these guys for uh, for a long time. It is a uh, triple F collection. We should definitely follow them. They do all kinds of crazy videos and stuff, uh, YouTube, social media. It gets really busy and hectic at the shop. And this gives me a chance to kind of relax a little bit while I'm driving down the road. So we'll just uh, cruise here for about the next half hour. Go get the car. I think you're gonna like what you what you're gonna see. Are you there? I am. What's going on? You said that um, there's gonna be a lot of cars. How many new cars with a uh, major paint correction are you thinking there might be? Well. Probably in the neighborhood of 10. Holy crap. Some old, old uh, 60s Chevys, a handful of newer Mercedes. By the time you guys get here, we might have a handful of Porsches. <laughs> of course. I don't think you guys will be uh, bored, yep. shall we say. Yeah, we got some activities uh, going on there that, that week. That's good. Let me kind of sketch out a timeline, and uh, we'll just plan accordingly from there. We'll give you a, a nice array to uh, practice so, your skills. Yeah, across. awesome. Yeah, because I, I, I need a little I need a little brushing up. All right, my friend. Uh, thanks as always, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. All right, bye now. Okay, so there you have it. Yeah, it's kind of cool going here to uh, to one collector, one collection, and being on the phone with. Um, you know, collector of ours that have been around for a long time, you know, over the years since I think 2012 or so. And I know a lot of you out there, you know, always uh, wanting to see more from that collection. Uh, I guess it'll depend on whether we can get Wes down there uh, or not. Who knows what in the world he's gonna have in there. 10 cars, major paint correction uh, on the road is uh, is definitely challenging, but uh, but it's a lot of fun too. So stay tuned on, on that one, that, uh, that should be a cool one. Here in a little bit, we're going to be at the, this collector's place, um, gather up uh, the, the GT. Like I said, I think you're going to dig it because it's um, pretty cool. We are here. All right, we're ready to go. See you back at the shop. All right, we made it uh, back to the shop, Ford GT. This thing is gonna look amazing when we get uh, the new HRE wheels on it. I've uh, been waiting a long time. The wheels look fantastic. They're black and a dark brush clear combo. Driving this thing, you can just tell that this is a pure sports car. Um, you know, I don't get into them. I don't drive my customers' cars that way. Uh, but you can just tell by the handling, everything about it that this would be unbelievable on the track or you know a spirited drive down in southern ohio uh, would be fantastic so for the age of this car unbelievable we'll take this get it cleaned up from the rally get all the graphics and everything uh, off of it um, you know check make sure everything is one piece then we'll get it back uh, to the uh, to the owner it's awesome what's that i oh, love the ford i was thinking the whole time andy's going to uh, approve of that what else has moved in? We got another Tesla in, another Tesla in, finishing up uh, a tint stuff. We work on a tremendous amount of Teslas. 
Teslas, Corvettes, Porsches, big part of our business. But we're getting to the end of the day. It's about a quarter till uh, five. So at this point, I start thinking about what needs to be finished up for the end of the day. Guys are kind of closing up uh, their, their projects. They'll be working for about another 45 minutes. Kind of get a basic cleanup uh, in the shop, get it ready. So it's ready to go first thing tomorrow morning. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what goes on behind the scenes here at Esoteric on a daily basis. And to remind you all, this video came from your ideas. We posted up a video asking for ideas. Uh, this was one of them. A lot of people came on and said, hey, we want to see uh, behind the scenes. Uh, the one thing that you didn't get to see here is the, the, the day in the life that goes into the two other places that we're working out of. You know, we've got our uh, product distribution right across the street from here. And then we've got our team that works down at uh, the, the local Mercedes dealership uh, as well. Let us know what you'd like to see. Let us know any questions that you may have on what you saw today. For a lot of you, it might have been uh, you know, kind of eye-opening to see such a busy shop behind the scenes, but you may have more questions. I'm the one that goes in, answers all of uh, uh, the, the questions and comments personally. If you got any comments, you got any questions about you know, what we're doing, how we're doing, any of these things, Put them in there. I'll go in, answer your questions. As always, we appreciate you hanging out with us here on the Esoteric Channel. Look forward to seeing you in our next video.